PhD student at the University of Hull in film musicology. I'm also a composer and my research interests are film music, including the early use of sound and music in Hollywood cinema, also animation studies, especially Disney. My PhD research looks at the use of music as storytelling agent in silent and sound cinema, also real space, and I'm focusing my research on the Disney films and the Disney theme parks. <laughs> Today I'm going to be focusing on Disney and how music was used in the Disney animated films as the sound of fantasy. Most importantly, uh, we'll be looking at how Disney uses music as storytelling agent, how they use different techniques, different styles in integrating music into the narrative of their films. to privilege what we see and forget about what we hear, especially music. Even though music could shape our understanding of the film, it could direct our attention and it could provide many other qualities. However, the film is not only what we see, it's not just the visuals. The film is a combination of many different factors that creates what Daniel Frampton calls the film being or the story being. The story exists before the film exists, it exists in the director's mind, in the composer's mind, in the film crew's mind and they all work together to create the film. Imagery and music are the two dominant voices in the film. However, the ways in which music has been studied in film musicology and film studies as well is through a hierarchy system where the story comes first, then the imagery, then the music. The imagery signifies the story and the music signifies the imagery. But music is not just a modifier of visual imagery or signifying. It provides meanings above the visual imagery sometimes it can provide qualities and cues and information above the visual imagery. And that's when music is signifying the story rather than imagery and music. And imagery are both equal but different agents of story. <laughs> John Bolton talks about film realities and he describes the classic realist narration as a world that is consistent and coherent. That world may obey stated or unstated set of rules um, that has its own created characters, um, even if those characters are not really realistic, just like um, talking animals in the Disney films or aliens. But as long as those characters obey the laws of the film, we, we then as audience can believe in the reality of that film. We can believe in the, re in the reality of the fictional world. If films create their own realities, they must also create their own sonic atmosphere or sonic ambience. <laughs> So firstly, Mickey Mousing, a technique that Disney has developed in um, combining music with imagery together, basically known as the closest possible marriage between music or sound and imagery. It's where the music occupies the characters in synchronize. Uh, so for example, if, if you saw, I don't know, if you saw Mickey moving or walking, the music would be in synchronize with his uh, footsteps this technique is so important because the music is not only enhancing what we're watching in the imagery essentially it, the music is the narrative itself where the entire scene would not make sense without its incorporation. It also emphasizes the idea of music as the sound of fantasy in those, in those films because in the real world we don't really have music that occupies our movements and actions. However, in those animated films 
the music are occupying the character's movements and the character's actions and it's be it's becoming one thing this is something that Rebecca Coyle has discussed is where music and imagery can synthesize to create one thing they blend to create one meaning and in the case of animated films you can't really take the music away from the imagery it's all one thing together especially in the early animated films the music is always recorded before the imagery someone like Wilford Jackson he describes the process of of making the animated film where the director the composer the animators they would all gather in what they call the music room and they'd all sit together and plan the animation <laughs> The second technique that Disney uses is using music as an, an invisible character and this is where the music can respond and can react to story elements in the film. So for example in Snow White and the Seven Dwarves there's a scene uh, after Snow White comes out from the, from the terrifying woods. She walks to the dwarf's house with the animals. The animals guide her really to the dwarf's house and she knocks on the door and she goes and no one responds to her. It's the music that responds to her. It's dark inside. So here the music is not only occupying the characters in a parallel mode, just like what, ha what happens in the Mickey Mousing, it reacts and responds to story elements in a call and response mode. So at that moment Snow White is curious and we can see the curiosity in her face because she's knocking on the door and she doesn't know what to expect. But the music in a way responds back to her as a confirmation of her curiosity. Film musicologist Anahid Kasavian talks about this and she describes how uh, music and sounds can confirm our actions. For example, if we're playing a game online and we lost or we won, um, there would be sounds to confirm our winning or sounds to confirm our losing and that in a way provides safe expectation. If we lost in a game, we may hear sounds such as um, and if we won, we may hear something like and hearing those sounds is rewarding because it's confirming to us if we either lost or if we won. Thirdly, Disney uses music as the sound of atmosphere in their animated films. If we notice, the music plays in the background throughout the majority of the film. We see this in many of the early animated Disney feature films, in Snow White, in Pinocchio, in Cinderella, in, in many of them, where the music is all the time playing in the background and it's not particularly calling attention to its musical voice or its musical content. Music was used to establish atmosphere and this is important because animation is a silent canvas that needs different layers and textures of realism and Disney provide that with the visuals and they do that also with the, with the sonic aspect with sound and music. Speech sound effects and music they all exist within the sonic space which exist in our ambient space and we cannot freeze sound as we can freeze images sound cannot be frozen so for us sound means naturally sound means ambience and it means atmosphere and when disney uses music sound in this way 
it's provided an expectation to us. If you saw someone clapping, you expect to hear that sound of clap. You expect, we expect to hear that. Um, so music here is used to establish that atmosphere and that believable environment and it's provided an expectation. <laughs> that we experience in the Disney films is in Peter Pan. It's the crocodile limitives, the tick tock. I'll get you for this pan if it's the last thing I do. I say, Captain. You hear something? No. 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 Yeah, this slow motif wouldn't really make sense outside the film context. The music here can only be denotative within the film context. And that's because we've learned the film language. If you were on a ship in the middle of the sea, or if you were by the river and a crocodile appears or a shark comes, you're not gonna hear you're not gonna hear tick tock. It's not gonna be you're gonna be scared and you're gonna and you're gonna run. There wouldn't be music. So again the music here is calling attention um, to the existence of a fantastical world that does not exist in the real world. This also touches upon um, the idea of diegetic, non-diegetic, and where does music fall in in the film narrative. Diegetic are the sounds that the characters can hear. So it's the sounds of the characters talking, the sounds of the speech, uh, the sound of the ambient space around them. And the non-diegetic sounds are the sounds that the characters can't really hear. So it would be the background music, it could be voice over narration. The styles and the techniques we've just discussed in the ways music is used in Disney animated films, it blurs that distinction between the diegetic and the non-diegetic. And the music is neither fallen in this category, or the category of the diegetic or the non-diegetic, it's falling into an other space, which I call the story space. Or um, Robin Stowell, she calls it the fantastical space. One of the most important things that um, unites all the techniques and styles that we've just discussed in Disney's use of music is that they did not call attention to music. Music was not the prime focus of attention. Music was used to create a whole sonic atmosphere and a sonic ambience on its own. Um, again, it was used as the sound of fantasy. It was used as the sound of their films. Disney's use of music shows how music is an integrating storytelling component to the imagery. Music um, is not used as a secondary element to the storytelling. Music is the story and imagery is the story as well. They both equal but different agents that unites together to create a phenomenal film being at the end. Um, when we as audience experience those films we don't perceive them as, as two separate events of the imagery and the music. We synchronize our senses to experience that film and we perceive it at the end as one event rather one event rather than two separate events. At last, uh, I hope you found this an interesting discussion and thank you very much.